Hello, and thanks for stopping by. Today we'll be reviewing Alma Linux OS 9.4 Seafoam Oslet. Now, I've never tried Alma Linux before, but I have tried Orion, which is based off of Alma Linux, and I liked the experience. So I thought it would be nice to give Alma Linux a shot and see what I thought of it. So a little bit about Alma Linux is that Alma Linux OS is an open source community driven Linux operating system that fills the gap left by the discontinuation of the CentOS Linux stable release. Alma Linux OS is an enterprise Linux distro, binary, compatible with RHEL, and guided and built by the community. The Alma Linux Foundation is a 501 nonprofit created for the benefit of the Alma Linux OS community. Ongoing development efforts are governed by the members of the community. So they're really focused on community driven, despite the fact that RHEL has anything to do with it. So that's nice. So what you'll want to do is go ahead and click this download button. You'll be taken to this page. And what we want is the boot ISO. So go ahead and click it and then download it. And once you have that downloaded, go ahead and stick it on a thumb drive or boot it up in a virtual machine. And if you need help with recommendations, use Belina Etcher for putting it on your thumb drive. And I personally use GNOME boxes for my virtual machines. Once you've done that, go ahead and boot into it and you should see something like this. And so what we're gonna do is test this media and install all my Linux 9.4. And I guess we don't get the live environment. I think that's a separate download. Yeah, it is a separate download, but don't download it yet because it's still on 9.3. Anyways, we'll go ahead and select English and continue. Our keyboard looks fine. Our language support looks fine. Time and date looks fine. Installation source looks fine. Software selection. I'm going to leave it. Installation destination. Let's click it. We're going to click on this hard drive here. And because this is a virtual machine, I'm not going to do anything different when it comes to swap. So I'll go ahead and click done. I uh, don't know what kdump is, so I'm going to leave it. The network seems fine. Security profile is fine. Let's create a root password. We'll do a super secure password, you guys. And then click done. Next, you'll want to create a user. And we're going to say that my name is Zipix. And then we're going to type in our super secure password again. And we're going to make this user an administrator. And then we're going to double click done. And we should be ready to install. I don't see anything else that we need to do. So we'll go ahead and click begin install. And then I'll come back when it's done. And we're here guys. Alright so let's take a look around. I don't want to take a tour right now. Um, so far I like the wallpaper. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of feeling in the middle. Like like I feel okay about it. I don't feel good or bad about it. But it's got some nice colors for sure. Alright so let's take a look at Firefox. Oh, uh, this is interesting. This is a lot like Manjaro. See how they got like these bookmarks up here? Only the difference is that I don't think Manjaro links to their homepage. So that's interesting. We are running 115.10.0 ESR. So we're on ESR. All right, let's go ahead and exit out of that. Let's take a look at activities. And let's take a look at all of our apps. Wow, this is very minimal. I don't know what I was expecting, but it, it is minimal. I love it when a distribution's minimal. Let's take a look at system monitor. Uh, everything looks good there. Uh, let's take a look at resources. The resources are actually not that bad. Like the CPU's doing well. Memory's doing well. I probably could have given this like two gigs, but I gave it four instead. Swap has two gigs. Normally I'd do at least four gigs for swap. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. Now let's take a look at file systems. File systems looks good. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. Let's take a look at our file browser. All right, and then we'll go to about files. It's at 40.2. It's nothing really too special about Nautilus. All right, let's go ahead and exit out of that. Let's go to software center. Oh, that was, that was kind of fast. All right, let's browse software. Even the software store is minimal. Let's see if we can find something like NeoFetch. No, the application is not found. I don't think you'd find NeoFetch in there anyway. But uh, let's try another one. What's, what's another one? Let's try GIMP. Is GIMP even there? Yeah, GIMP is there. All right, let's go ahead and install that. Yeah, we just have all my Linux package here. Although I'm sure you could add something like flat packs to it if you wanted to. All right, so that's good. Let's go ahead and open it. We'll open GIMP. Uh, is that... Hold on a minute. Uh, was that GIMP? I don't know. What did I just? <laughs> uh, bruh, I don't know how to feel about that, dog. What was that? 
What was that logo? What was that boot? All right, let's keep going, though. Uh, unstable development version. Why are we on unstable development version? This is 2.99.8. So I think it's on the latest. Wow, GIMP looks totally weird now. Okay, let's close out of that. Let's go ahead and install something from the terminal, see what that looks like. So sudo dnf install neofetch. Go ahead and enter our super secure password. Oh, it looks like it wasn't able to find NeoFetch. Oh, we could add HTOP. All right, sudo dnf install HTOP. No argument for HTOP? You ain't even got HTOP? Okay, you gotta have Kava. Do we have Kava? Uh, Kava. No arguments for it. Okay, let's try adding GIMP again. Because I, I know that's installed for sure. All right, so it uh, has nothing to do because it's already installed. All right. Well, maybe they don't have HTOP or CAV in the DNF. Okay, what about Inkscape? Let's try Inkscape. We'll see where that's at. Okay, we do have Inkscape, so go ahead and enter that. All right, now that that's installed, let's go ahead and go into Inkscape. We'll choose default for everything. Go ahead and save. Thanks. Uh, don't really care about that. Let's look at the new document. All right, let's see what we're on here. 1.1? That's crazy. Why would you ship with 1.1? That's, that's old. We're already on 1.3, I think. I think, uh, Debian's on, like, 1.2, maybe. I don't remember right off, but, like, th this is old. All right, let's close out of that. All right, the last thing I want to take a look at is settings. For backgrounds, um... Okay, here's one thing I noticed about their backgrounds. Their backgrounds are more about colors than they are about scenery. This one doesn't look too bad. I think I might would go with this one, actually. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. We'll leave it at that one for now, though. All right, let's go to About. It is showing we're on 9.4, Seafoam Oslet. Gnome is on 40, and we are running Wayland. So that's good. All right, so what do I think about Alma Linux? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the only other experience that I've had with Alma Linux was using Orion, and that's because it was being based off of it, or forked, or however you want to say it. I think the only issue when it comes down to it, though, is that I wasn't able to install stuff like NeoFetch or HTOP. But for the most part, the software store works as it should. And you can install packages there. Pretty much whatever you find in the software store, you could install in the terminal. But it seems like if I can't find it in the software store, then I can't download it. Which that seemed kind of odd. It's great that they're running GNOME 40 because they don't have to be running the latest and greatest. Because if you were to install extensions and stuff like that, you have that high possibility of extensions being incompatible. So yeah, I think it's a, it's a win-win for that. Overall, it was a nice experience. I think what it comes down to is do I want to run the DNF software package manager? This is great for if you want to run like a minimal version of Fedora, in my opinion. Like, I don't know what the situation is with Fedora, as in whether or not you can do a minimal install. But if Fedora doesn't allow you to do a minimal install, then Alma Linux is great. I think, again, the only thing is, is you'd have to work out some packages in the package manager. Because I would like to know why I couldn't download HTOP. But other than that, Salma Linux is solid. I think I would recommend all my Linux. And with that being said, we have come full circle. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe, and I shall see you guys in the next video.